You might have missed it on Twitter, but Eric Fawcett had a tweet that went crazy viral showing a South Korean pro player banking in his free throws. But it turns out this isn't an anomaly. There are a number of players in this league doing it. So it got me thinking, is there something to this? Should we be teaching it? Banked in free throws for the normal person aren't a good idea. I got on the court to try it out and I gotta say, it was really hard to generate enough power to get it to the backboard without jumping. I was a great free throw shooter back in the day, but I'm old and inflexible now, but once I got warmed up, it did feel like I could get consistent with them. Let's get back to the South Koreans. The most interesting case is of Yonggi Ha, who switched to banked free throws in the middle of his season. While this big man struggled on his first 30 free throws trying to drop them straight through the rim, when he started hitting the backboard, his percentage shot way up. Let's compare the two forms to see if anything in his mechanics changed in order to get the ball to bounce off the backboard. Even going frame by frame, there is virtually no discernible difference between the shots, so it's not like he had to change his form at all. And yet, he was increasing the margin for error by using the backboard, since one thing I noticed was that he seemed to miss his normal shots long. So I suspect because he's a big guy, he was having trouble controlling the distance calibration. So it would make sense to go the other way. Instead of uncomfortably trying to shoot with less power, let's lean into it and use a little more. Let's compare the arc of the two shots to see what he had to do to bank these shots in. For the bank shot, he drops the arc about 3 degrees, which increases his ability to control the shot. The ball should be on the way down before it hits the board or else there will be too much energy and it will slam off the front rim and roll out. Chang Yong Chung also switched mid-season last year. Although he shot them decently when trying to go straight in, there was almost a 13-point jump after going to the bank. As you can see, there is virtually no difference in his body mechanics either, so he didn't have to reprogram anything, which is always good if you can then find success without learning a whole new process. The biggest difference is with the arc. In order to bank it, you can have less arc, which gives him more control and could make it easier to keep it straight and the difference is much larger than what we saw with Yonggi Ha. That said, you have to be careful with going too low, for the ball would then slam off the backboard too hard and roll off the rim. I do think it's important that the ball is on its way down before it hits the backboard, but here's an example of almost no downward flight on a very low trajectory that hits right in the middle of the top horizontal line of the box and goes right in the basket. The last player we'll look at is Jay Do Lee, and he fascinates me because I found free throws of his from 2015 and he was banking them in back then. His arc looks crazy high from this angle, but when you look at how he's shooting it now, it's a very typical 46 degrees. What we can take away from this new skill is that you don't need to add more arc than a regular free throw, nor do you need to change the form. The key is to hit the backboard no higher than the top horizontal line of the box, backspin most certainly helps, and you do have some leeway about left or right where the ball will still go in since the rim is twice as wide as the ball itself. Eric Fawcett is a team strategy and analytics consultant who was first to share this footage, so I reached out to him for his thoughts. So Eric, thanks so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, at, at what point did you discover uh, that the people in South Korea were shooting free throws this way? Well, I, I have kind of this 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 intense FOMO about there being some concept going around uh, somewhere else in the world uh, that I'd be missing out on. That's something that's revolutionary and amazing. And and with my work with Division One teams, I just uh, you know being on the cutting edge is something I try to pride myself on. So uh, for me, that means often checking out different leagues around the world. I'll say the first time I saw a player confidently bank in a free throw and there'd be no reaction from anyone on the floor or in the stands, uh, you know, I kind of was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I saw him bank the second one. And uh, then I looked up and I saw, oh, that guy's an 83% free throw shooter. And then I saw a different player do it in a different game. And he was an 81% free throw shooter. There's four of the top nine percentage free throw shooters in Korea are doing it. Um, I looked at two more that were just kind of outside that range, kind of in the 15 to 20 range. Um, so I'll say, you know, not that I've done a conclusive look, but at least six of the top, uh, the top 15 or, or 20 ish uh, free throw shooters in Korea are doing it. When I got in the court to practice the bank free throw, it was really just hard for me to generate enough power. I started by shooting a couple of regular free throws first and then went off the board. But when I switched to a different type of backboard, this shot became a better choice. A true bounce backboard has holes in it that increase the force absorption up to 28%, meaning there's a lot more leeway to how hard your shots hit the backboard before going in the rim. 
I also think the perforations provide a better shooting background as well, more targets to aim for compared to a clear glass backboard. True bounce are perfectly legal and help more shots go in. Heck, if the rules say that the breakaway rims must absorb 30-50% to 50 of the ball's energy, why shouldn't the backboard do the same? These backboards are perfectly legal, are weather resistant for outdoor use, and if you want more information about installing these in your gym, send an email here and tell them Coach Nick sent you. I invited Tom Haverstrow onto the show after he wrote a thought-provoking substack that added even more nuance to the banked free throw. And so my first thought was, man, Tim Duncan's got to be smiling somewhere. Uh, maybe he's on an island, uh, maybe the, the British Virgin Islands somewhere, just not even paying attention to anything basketball. But I'd like to think that um, this entered the basketball cosmos and reached Tim Duncan in some way because I, for one, wonder why we don't bank in shots more often. And and by the way, it's appropriate as well because he shot under 70% from the free throw line himself. Um, perhaps he should have tried that. So there's obviously two trains of thought here. Um, is it is there less margin for error or more margin for error on this thing? And I feel like this was sort of what your idea when you started to write in your Substack about this. So what did you, how did you solve this uh, this question and, and whether or not it would be easier or not? Well, there's this professor at NC State that has literally studied banked in free throws for years. Uh, literally studied the perfect trajectory of a jump shot or a free throw. Um, millions of shots that they've studied at NC State. And what he found was that banked in free throws for the normal person aren't a good idea, but for really strong individuals, really big individuals that don't have any problem with the extra force that it requires to bank in a shot, it might be a good idea. And so that's why my mind went to Steven Adams, who's one of the strongest human beings on planet earth and just so happens to play basketball um, and he just so happened to shoot 36% from the free throw line is when Dr. Larry um, Silverberg brought this up that stronger players should try this because they have a be they have a physical advantage that makes it easier for them to bank in a shot. A quick look at Steven Adams' free throw form and you can see the issue. His wrist flexes to neutral way after his set point and then tries to extend a few degrees before releasing the shot. This indicates to me that he is afraid of shooting with too much power and is struggling to calibrate it properly. In fact, there were a number of times this year where he actually hits the backboard on his misses, so he's already halfway towards the banked in free throw. With just a little adjustment to his power generation, I think he can improve that percentage. If he can just get it into the upper 50s, he wouldn't be such a liability from the line. The professor that you're talking to it, it kind of got the impression that maybe he felt that um, there it might not be less, but it's not more margin for error. Is that safe yeah. to say? Yeah, that it, it wasn't, um, it, you weren't getting a huge benefit from banking it in, but it was as effective for larger uh, players. And as, as you know, like different players have different mechanics and different mental uh, hitches. And so it might not work for every Steven Adams out there or might not work for every uh, DeAndre Jordan, but it could help some of them and that's worthy of trying and i know that um uh one of my favorite follows on twitter crumple jumper who's uh, todd whitehead he actually tracked the offensive rebounds or the rebounds the available rebounds off of one of the shooters in the in the korean basketball league and found surprisingly that the banked in free throws missed closer like fell off the rim closer uh, it wasn't ricocheting out to the three-point line as much as he thought. And on average, um, it bounced off the rim a lot softer. And therefore, like the, off the, the available rebounds, he didn't have to go very far to get those. And that was surprising to me. I would have thought that the more traditional free throw, just shooting it, it would be softer off the rim. I had the same exact thought about potential offensive rebounds before I started pouring through hundreds of missed banked free throws. I went through two of these shooters' misses, and don't forget, you cannot count the first free throw attempt where no one is actually going for the rebound. It turns out, not a lot of these misses get retrieved by the offensive team. So I started to also look at the misses of these players that were banking uh, to try to see what kind of trends there were with the offensive rebounding. And, and, and that was really interesting because, you know, there's less long rebounds than you would think oh. because I think a lot of the misses are missing far, so you can, if of course, kind of trying to describe it, that kind of action of 
backboard, hitting front rim, then back off the backboard and spilling out, it actually turned into a lot of really close rebounds. However, if you miss left and right, those balls were careening way to kind of the short corner to the baseline. And that was something that, you know, I'd even love to talk to some of these Korean teams because still when they're trying to offensive rebound, um, uh, miss free throws, they're still kind of flooding the middle of the lane. Like you maybe would with a conventional free throw shooter, where to me, a very high rate of the rebounds were going directly sideways. And it didn't look like teams were quite ready to adapt to that yet. So to be honest, even though it's a trend that's obviously happening in the Korean game, uh, I, I think even, you know, I don't think they're even completely uh, used to it yet because there was a lot of rebounds spilling out directly to the left or right of the rim that were uh, really available that would hit the ground, you know, two or three times before being recovered almost always by the defensive team. So, um, yeah, there's still there's still some conversation to be had about uh, about offensive rebounding off these misses, uh, even in the league that uh, the trend is happening, I believe. So in the end, what did I find? I'm certainly kicking myself for not thinking of a solution before considering I'm more than willing to have a player try underhanded free throws if that could improve their percentage. And there is no question there is something to this whole thing, especially because lowering the arc can help with control of the shot. And if there are big guys who are strong and struggle to control that power, the banked in free throw is absolutely a viable strategy for someone who can hit them any other way.